The US airdrops food into Gaza two days after over 100 Gazans die trying to get food from an aid convoy. A Russian drone has killed four people in an apartment block in Odessa and a drone has hit an apartment block in St. Petersburg. An Israeli airstrike has killed at least 11 Gazans and injured around 50 who were sheltering in a tent pitched outside a hospital in Rafa City, the health ministry said. Some of the injured and the dead were taken to the Al-Aqsa hospital in the city of Deir al-Bala. Meanwhile, on Saturday, the U.S. military airdropped food into Gaza for the first time. The U.N. has repeatedly warned that Gazans face starvation and disease. We need every single crossing into Gaza alternate. We need to get them put methods to food. Uh, and these people need to have not just food and water. The hospitals need equipment. They need specialized services. They need special machines. In Tel Aviv, thousands of Israelis marched towards Jerusalem on Saturday, calling for the release of the remaining 134 hostages. So far, 123 hostages have been released. A Russian drone killed four people and injured eight others overnight on Friday in the port city of Odessa, city officials have said. One of those who died was a three-month-old baby. The Odessa region's governor, Ole Kipa, said that the Iranian-made drone was shot down by air defences and it was falling debris that had hit the apartment building. The military reported that the Odessa region was attacked by eight drones and that seven of them were shot down by its air defences. Nationwide, the air defences were reported to have shot down 14 of the 17 drones that attacked. Meanwhile, in Russia, a drone attack caused an explosion in a building in St. Petersburg. Local media reported that six people received medical help, quoting the press service of the city's health committee. Russia's defence ministry hasn't commented. Russia's MASH news site said that the building was hit by a Ukrainian drone. The centre-left Party of European Socialists has chosen Nicholas Schmidt as its candidate to go up against Commission President Ursula von der Leyen in the elections in June. Schmidt is currently European Commissioner for Jobs and Social Rights and he's vowed to take on the far right. Do they have a project except they want to destroy Europe? What, is, what are their solutions? There are none. What are the socialist solutions? The socialist solutions you have for them, it's very clear. We want a strong Europe. We want a united Europe. We want a Europe for a strong economy. Polls suggest the centre-left will get around 20% of the votes and keep their position as the second strongest European party behind the conservative European People's Party. Se a presidência da Comissão Europeia for para o centro-direita, este grupo deverá lutar por ter a presidência do Conselho Europeu, que reúne os líderes dos 27 Estados-membros da União Europeia. Em Roma, Isabel Marques da Silva, Euronews. Alexander Stubb has been sworn in as Finland's new president. In a nationwide address, he said the country is facing a new era after becoming a NATO member. For his first foreign trip, he'll go to the Arctic region of neighbouring Norway, where NATO drills will take place for 12 days. And in a recent interview, he didn't exclude the possibility that nuclear weapons might be stationed in Finland, although the law would have to change to allow this to happen. Finland's president is also commander of the armed forces. Iris Apfel was a textile expert, an interior designer and a fashion celebrity known for her eccentric style. Born in 1921, Apfel was famous for her irreverent eye-catching outfits, mixing haute couture and oversized costume jewellery. A classic Apfel look was to pair a feather burr with strands of chunky beads, bangles and a jacket decorated with Native American beadwork. I'm not pretty and I'll never be pretty, but it doesn't matter, she once said. I have something much better. I have style.